Hello. So I'm sitting in one of our brand new Skyhawks, the newest one on our fleet. When I got to looking at the panel, it looks pretty normal. We have my two G1000 displays, but I noticed that, of course, instead of my normal backup instruments, there's only one here, and that is my Garmin 275 backup display. And of course, I, I knew this before I got in the airplane to go fly it. And I did a little research about this, and what I found out is a little bit weird. Um, and so I wanna unpack that in this video, but uh, for a context, let's go get in another Skyhawk in our fleet that has the, what I would call the traditional backup instruments for the G1000 system. Well, besides the fact that this airplane does not smell brand new and have the nice new leather interior, uh, it's pretty much a lot like the other Skyhawk that I was just sitting in, except for it is a few years older. So here's the uh, older Skyhawk, still a G1000, they have three equipped, but you can see, obviously, we have a difference in the backup instrumentation provided. So I've still got my two screens, my PFD, my MFD, but I, instead of that little Garmin 275 backup display, I have got a little instrument here, my attitude indicator, which clearly says vacuum right there. And I've got an airspeed indicator and I've got my altimeter. Clearly, all of these instruments are not electronically driven in any way, shape, or form. They're actually completely separate from the aircraft's electrical system. Now, the fact that those instruments that I just showed you is different than the Garmin G275-powered airplane leads me to a concept called Descendable VFR. So what is Descendable VFR? Well, Descendable VFR is something that we really want to understand from the perspective of where can I take this airplane to if we have a complete failure of my instrumentation systems, I have a compass still, where is there an area of visual meteorological conditions I don't know why people call it VFR, it's kind of a misnomer really, but where is the area of visual meteorological conditions where I can get myself using a compass and just basic instrumentation to get out of the clouds so that I could land? Do I have navigation equipment? Once I get on my standby instruments only, I don't. So that's why I'm using a compass and a general direction of what way to go for this area that I am wanting to know before I go fly instrument, especially in a single engine airplane, because in a single engine airplane, I've got one alternator and that's really it. That's my source of electrical power. There is batteries. We'll talk about those in a moment, but if I'm in a multi-engine airplane, I've got two alternators is much less likely for me to lose my complete electrical system on an alternator failure. Okay. So the legacy Skyhawk uh, that most of the fleet that I fly actually has, uh, which was common in Cessna's installations for a number of years, quite a few years really, it looks like this from the pedostatic system. Um, I'm going to get my drawing pen out. Okay, so we have got a pedo tube that is providing pedo pressure both to the air data computer, that's part of the G1000, and it's providing pedo pressure to my airspeed indicator. I also have a static port on the outside of the airplane. It's giving static pressure to my altimeter, my standby altimeter, and my standby airspeed indicator, as well as giving static into my air data computer. And the air data computer then gives my G1000 a lovely picture of what's going on. Yay. We also have integrated in this an alternate static source in case my static port does not work or gets clogged or something. And we have a pedo heater to keep ice from forming on the pedo tube. The other item that I've got available in the legacy, what I'm going to call the legacy G1000 because it's what Textron was making for a number of years and the Skyhawks anyway, we have a vacuum system. So in the vacuum system, I have got my engine running a vacuum pump. 
So it's driven by the engine. It is basically running air at a very high speed over a gyroscope, which is my attitude indicator. And you can see it on the panel in with my standby instruments right here. That is powered by air through the engine driven vacuum pump. Now, if you want to know more about how the instrument works, I got a different series about rigidity in space and attitude indicator. So, you know, go watch that and come back to this. But essentially, I have got a completely mechanical attitude indicator that tells me, as long as my engine's running and my vacuum pump is working, that tells me which way is up and which way is down. And I have my standby airspeed and standby altimeter. Okay, so that's what I'm going to call, that's the legacy G1000 systems that Textron's been putting in Skyhawks for years. Now, this uh, is in the airplane that was just delivered where I work a few months ago. And so I got in the airplane and I started looking at it and I was like, wow, there's no, there's a reduced down on my standby instruments to this, this Garmin 275 backup instrument. It's actually really pretty. We have even more information at first glance. I've got a vertical speed information. I've got a heading information. Um, I got a, a, a slip skid indicator. It looks like a mini G1000 primary flight display. It's super cool. I looked into how this all works. So it has its own internal air data computer. So it has its own separate one from the G1000. That's nice because if the G1000's air data computer breaks, I still have it in my Garmin 275. That's really plus for this system. Yay. Um, I also have got my pedo input going straight into the, uh, the air data computer that's part of the Garmin 275, as well as the pedo pressure still going to my good old air data computer. Same for the static. I've got static port, static pressure is going into my Garmin 275 air data computer, and I've got my static pressure going into my air data computer for the big G1000. And we've still got an alternate static source in case the static port got plugged. Okay, the other thing that my Garmin 275 has got in it is an internal battery. Uh, and this is really what was driving my quest to figure out how this thing worked if I had an electrical failure. Like, how long does this internal battery last? Where is it getting powered from? Because this Garmin 275 backup is nothing mechanical about it. It's totally, totally electronic. So it clearly has to have a battery because if the alternator of the aircraft is providing my electrical power, if it fails, well, we're going on batteries. So, so what's going on? All right, this is what happens in the timeline uh, and I'm going to explain this in a second, but this is a timeline. What would happen if the G1000, like what I'm calling again, the legacy Skyhawk, what Textron's been making for years, if we had an electrical system failure? The source is the Skyhawk's pilot information manual. Feel free to, to look that up on your own. Okay, if we have a alternator failure of our aircraft's alternator, the engine driven alternator, alternator fails. So at that point, Cessna pilot information manual for the Skyhawk tells me we go on the main battery. There is a process by which you should reduce your electrical power. If you do that, you are supposed to get approximately 30 minutes from my main battery. When it could be longer, depends on how much power you're using. If my main, once my main battery goes below 20 volts, then the aircraft automatically goes over to the standby battery. If you are running off the standby battery, you're going to only have their primary flight display. So only the pilot's side screen showing me all that is going to run. I'm also reduced to only communications on radio number one and navigation on the navigation radio number one. I do have GPS still and I have a few other things um, like the standby the standby instrument lights. So I have that available to me. According to, again, the pilot information manual, the standby battery should power this 
list of items until it gets below 20 volts, which is approximately 30 more minutes or one hour total. Okay, so that is like total time after my alternator failed over here, all the way to one hour. That's what we've got. Okay, at that point, we are going on the standby instruments only. Also, I have a compass. So, uh, all electrical systems would not work. I wouldn't have any communication or navigation capability, which is why at the beginning I was talking about this idea of knowing where the weather would allow me to descend in visual meteorological conditions. So, because I've lost my communications, lost my navigation, lost my GPS, but I'm still able to fly the airplane in the clouds because I've got my standby attitude indicator, I've got a standby altimeter, and a standby airspeed indicator. So these guys are my friends, plus my little compass, which is not shown up here, but we'll make it a happy face. So we've got a compass available up here. So I can use these things to keep the airplane flying reasonably well in a direction which I've predetermined is going to lead to visual weather where I could see the ground and make a safe landing at an airport. It's not great, but it keeps me going. Okay, because all of these things, my backup things, all of them have no electrical connection whatsoever other than the lights inside them. But if I'm flying at night, I really should have a flashlight with me anyway. That's just being intelligent pilot. All right, so let's talk about the Garmin the new Garmin. So this would be with the Garmin 275 as a backup. Timeline. If we have an alternator failure. So alternator failure happens. Okay. And the timeline is actually really similar to the previous timeline I talked about uh, up until one hour into this process. Okay. With my uh, first 30 minutes, everything's operating normally. Uh, after the 30 minutes, we are going on the standby battery. The Garmin 275, I'm going to abbreviate it as the G275. It, the backup is working at this point. This is available. Okay, and it continues to work even after the standby battery dies. So my standby battery is completely dead after an hour. But then, here's where things kind of get wacky. The Garmin 275 backup According to the what I found in the G1000 manual and the Skyhawk Pilot Operating Handbook, the Garmin 275 backup, the battery, lasts for one hour total. So let's write that on there. So it lasts for one hour total. At, at, uh, during this period, the first 30 minutes, the main battery is still powering the G275. So I'm not using my hour at that point. So one hour after my failure is 30 minutes in to one hour and 30 minutes after the failure, I have the G275 available. But the scary part for me is at this point, I've only got, after my standby battery goes out, I've only got 30 minutes left on my Garmin 275 backup. So I don't have a lot of time to get that airplane on the ground before the Garmin 275 battery is also going to fail. At that point, I'm on only a compass. That is, that is it. I have nothing else available. I have no attitude information. I have no information about what altitude I'm flying at. I have no information about the airspeed of the aircraft. I have nothing but a compass. So this is what it would look like after 60 minutes, after 60 minutes after my alternator failure, I have lost, clearly I've lost the PFD, I've lost the MFD went away as soon as we went on standby battery. Um, I do still have my good old friend, the compass, we'll draw him up there, but I have got only my Garmin 275 after 60 minutes and 30 more minutes down the road, this is dead too. It's completely black. The only thing I've got is a compass. So after researching that, I mean, here are my conclusions as an instrument pilot who flies these airplanes regularly and flies them regularly in instrument meteorological conditions. In a legacy, what I'm calling legacy G1000 with non 
electronic with mechanical backup with my mechanical vacuum driven engine driven air my vacuum driven attitude indicator that's awesome i've got a standby airspeed and a standby altimeter i need to find descendable vfr within the fuel range of the aircraft which i can control as a pilot i can add more fuel given my weight and balance limits so I need to find descendable VFR within the fuel range of the aircraft. For the Skyhawk, that's that's fairly big ring. I mean, we're talking about like five hours possibly. Okay, with if I am flying a G1000 with the Garmin 275 backup, I need to find descendable VFR within the battery life of that backup, that, that G275 backup. And so that means I am looking for something where I can land within one hour and 30 minutes of my departure airport. I'm looking for somewhere where I could do descendable VFR within like an hour and a half. Really? I feel very scared actually flying with only this, uh, only my Garmin 275 backup for that last 30 minutes. I am really getting worried. So. Honestly, I would say I want to find descendable VFR in this second kind of aircraft within about an hour, uh, which considerably narrows my range. With, with the Legacy G1000, you know, about five hours. Um, I'm not. I'm not limited by this backup battery. With the G275, with that backup, I'm going to be looking for descendable VFR within an hour. So I hope you like this unpacking of how the backup systems work. Just think about this. If you're flying IMC a lot in a single engine driven aircraft, depending on the backup systems, know what they are, what their capabilities are. That's going to make you a safer instrument rated pilot. So. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share these videos with somebody else who flies instruments and fly safe.